think felt tip, if I had to describe it in a sentence, is probably is concerned with memory, social class, gender, and technology. Any digital files with high value, great size, or in current circulation will be located in soft drives, known locally as felt tips. Felt tips part of a, well, a series of three works which are interrelated. It's the second in the, of the three. And in a way, it's the, the key to all of the other works in, in the sense that this is a work in which we meet the narrators of the whole project. And we are the administrative core. In this piece of work emerged out of um, a collection of men's ties that I started collecting. I just became fascinated with ties of a certain era, I mean, I suppose from the mid-70s into the mid-80s, which feature imagery that seems to be related to the emerging electronic technologies of the time. Originally, the required work web of the professional male, the necta was used to communicate authority and class distinction. Variations on a diagonal motif, along with crest and insignia, would silently convey a privileged school background military training or the membership of elite clubs and societies. So it was, I suppose I became interested in how the emblems of the tie alluded to a kind of social memory in relation to the wearer and that then these became replaced by ties which bore imagery which seemed to allude to technological memory or the capacity for memory. Networks rhythmically punctuated with multiple elements. These embellished the tie as traditional crests might, but look now more like notes, cells, or even memory chips. The narrators, um, who are probably female, um, claim the memory chips um, as their own resource and decide um, that they're going to use them uh, or use the idea of technological memory as a record of their own experience. But it also came out of this book which is actually featured in the film called Sexuality and Class Struggle and the reason I was interested in this book was not so much for its, the, its content um, but because it was annotated throughout by a previous reader using a purple felt tip. And it was, I think it was probably a woman. So this is quite a doer book. It's very much of its time. From a feminist point of view, you know, it needed to catch up a bit. And I, I suppose I imagined that this reader was a woman, she went through and she, she responded to this, basically this Marxist text, which was rather patriarchal, with a purple felt tip and kind of annotated all throughout the, the, uh, the book. And it just seemed such a, um, a witty, you know, interestingly vulgar response, like the most kind of trivial kind of pen, the most adolescent pen, but used slightly aggressively, slightly argumentatively. And I really, really enjoyed her commentary on the book. This was a shared joke, which never entirely undermined its use as formal attire. And so the idea of felt tip and the, the conception of the narrators really comes from this commentator in this book. Generally how I work on the, on the timeline when I'm editing is I drag huge amounts of clips on there. And it's more like a process of collage or something where I have stacks and stacks of clips. I mean, only the top one is visible at any time, but I know there are like 10 or 15 clips underneath. And every, while I'm developing the edit, I'm continually pulling ones up from the bottom. One of the things for me about like when a film is finished is when I feel so, in some way that the density of all this m material is expressed through the narrative. The process is relatively straightforward. The format of, of the work with two 16 by nines on top of each other, so it makes a kind of very tall projection. They're absolutely distinct and indeed there's a gap between the projections. And this is because they exist almost like, almost like separate spaces, um, as one might imagine separate folders within a, you know, a file system in a computer and things may move between them, but they are, there's the below ground and there's the above ground in, um, in felt tip. So it was partly because of the subject matter of the ties, which are this, this long form, but mainly because uh, I wanted to express some kind of relationship between 
the cache, like that is the kind of the, the area of the computer in which all of the materials that the work depends upon are stored, and the timeline, which is in a sense where the the elements are selected um, and which are visible to the viewer. This is the executive level, and that is the cache, sometimes called the store. The first place that the work is going to be shown at is in uh, the Walker Art Centre in Minneapolis. The gallery in which the work will be shown is a, is a two-storey high um, museum space, um, but it used to be, historically, it was uh, divided at halfway uh, along the wall, if you like, you know, um, and upstairs there were offices and downstairs there were kind of facilities. And that, that gave me this idea for these two split screens within the architecture of uh, the walker. Any digital files with high value, great size, or currency. The legs represent the narrators, but also as a metaphor for storytelling. They're walking us through a, a set of improbable and uh, ideas. Their identity in terms of gender is not. I mean, it's fairly explicit. I mean, they, they look like women's legs, but they 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 manifest uh, supplements. I.e., they're very very hairy, or at least socially unacceptably hairy. They're no more hairy than, than most women are. In a sense, they they are demonstrating attributes which are not necessarily that socially demonstrated by by women. We wore them in an unusual way. We wore the narrow end of the tie was cut off. I started off by writing the section which is this right, rather hyperbolic um, social history of the Thai, you know, talking about what the Thai means, and um, which is from the point of view of the um, narrators. Of course, it's only ever men that wear the ties. The narrators are probably women. Um, and so they speak about this history of memory um, as something which never quite included them and which provides the motivation for their, both their sarcasm and their fury. Things haven't gone our way. No. 